Hello everybody and welcome back. It is yet another horrible day in Chicago with 40 degree weather in May. Fortunately, I've loaded up on so I'm good to stay in all day and do absolutely nothing. Anyways, let's make some systems design videos. I'm gonna get out the iPad and we can get started by talking about leaderless replication. All right, so let's get back into it. I've got leaderless replication up on the iPad and let's talk about it. So for starters, basically the gist is if you recall, leaderless replication is when you have one guy on the left over here, he can write to multiple database nodes. So as you can see, he's writing to two of them. I got this guy over here and this guy over here. And then a different reader can read from any arbitrary number of database nodes. So in that case, he's gonna read from this guy again and also the one on the top. When he does a read such as that, he might notice that this guy on the top was not written to, so what he can actually do is perform a read repair in order to update it with proper data. And also, in addition to that, just over time, uh, you know, kind of as time flies, the databases will actually communicate amongst themselves in order to pass information and make sure that reads aren't too stale. That is known as anti-entropy. As you can see, we've got a Merkle tree located over here to indicate how these databases actually compare their state and to see the discrepancies between them. So we've gone ahead and done our kind of review. Let's move on to the new content for today. So the new content that we're going to be talking about is quorums. So I teased last time that basically there's a way that you can write in a leaderless replication schema, and then somebody else is actually going to instantly be able to read that instead of having to rely on read repair and a bunch of anti-entropy in order to propagate those changes around. So what is a quorum read and a quorum write? Well, let's start out with a hypothetical situation. In this case, there are n nodes in the cluster. So let's call this variable n equal to five. And uh, that's, you can see there are basically five database nodes. Okay, so our writer on the left over here is going to perform writes to three of them. So as you can see, we've got a write here, a write here, and a write here. And let's call that number of nodes that we have to write to W. In this case, W is basically saying, okay, as a client, once I get three confirmations from database nodes that they've received my write, I will consider my write successful. Okay, so it's basically just waiting on three successful writes to be like, okay, I'm good, my write is in the system. Similarly, we've got another guy over here on the right side of the screen. He wants to read from R nodes. So let's say that R is equal to three, right? He's going to try to read from three different database nodes. So let's say he picks these two as the first, right? Oh no, that's not very good because they don't have the updated value. How is he going to see the guy on the left's updated value? Well, now he has to pick one more node and all three nodes that he has to choose from have already been written to. So in this case, regardless of which one he actually picks, you know he's going to be reading from at least one node with the most updated value that was just written by the guy on the left. So why does this actually work, or rather, when does this actually work? We recall that n is the number of nodes in the cluster, w is the number of nodes that we'll write to, and r is the number of nodes that we'll read from. When w plus r is greater than n, we have what's known as a quorum read and a quorum write. In that quorum read and quorum write, we know that the two sets of nodes that are both written to and read from will have at least one node in overlap. Why? Because of this phrase right here, it's simple math. Because of the fact that w plus r is greater than n, there needs to be at least one node overlapping between w and r. Hence, we can always see the most update date value at least once and we'll have a correct read. But let's move onwards. So the question now, and you might have been thinking this, is, hey, wait a second, with quorum rights, didn't we just achieve strong consistency? And to remind you all what strong consistency is, it basically means that everyone who's reading from our database, pretty much any node or any type of read, is going to return the most up-to-date value. Everyone's going to agree on what that value is, right? So regardless of which nodes I read from, as long as I have a quorum of nodes that I'm reading from, aka at least R successful reads, then I should, in theory, see the most up-to-date value in our database. So is this actually the case here? And it turns out that even though it seems that way at first, it's actually not. So I'm gonna give a few examples of where kind of quorum writes as potentially strongly consistent databases fall apart. So the first one is actually going to be a race condition. Imagine we've got three databases and at the same time, three people writing. So the first guy is going to write to the first database and actually all three people are going to write to all three databases. But due to the rate condition that is present when you send about a bunch of writes, 
those writes are going to come in in a different order. So you can see that you know we've got version one over here. These are the earliest writes to arrive at the database. And then version three, these are the latest writes to arrive at the database. And so what ends up happening is due to this race condition, all three databases actually disagree on which write has the latest version number. And that's a problem. Why? Because now if I'm a guy over here and I'm trying to read from these three databases, right? Let's imagine that I have to choose two of them. Let's say we use two and two as our quorum. So the number of nodes that we have to read to guarantee that we have a quorum read is two. This guy is going to choose from database two and database three. And so all he knows now is that W1 or W2 is the answer. And that's not even conclusive. But if I were another guy over here and I also did a quorum read to database one and database two, I would have a completely different result. And so even though these two guys are reading at the same exact time, they are not getting the same answer and that is obviously a problem. In fact, the database isn't even conclusive because a majority of the nodes don't agree on what the value is. So obviously, leaderless replication, even with quorum writes, is still prone to write conflicts. Let's move onwards to another case, which is actually just going to be when writes fail. So let's say, again, we have a three node setup. So in this case, n is equal to three, w is equal to two, and r is equal to two. So two plus two is greater than three. So that's how we know we have a successful quorum. So this guy on the left is going to now write to two nodes. He attempts to write to two nodes, and one of them succeeds over here on the top, and the other is going to fail. So let's say beforehand, all three databases in the cluster agreed that this value x was equal to six. And this guy over here was trying to write that x is equal to 10. And he succeeds on just one node. Now the problem is that when this guy over here on our right tries to read, not only does he see the fact that x equals 10, even though this write technically wasn't valid, why was the right not valid? Because it didn't successfully get to two nodes, it only got to one node, but it never got overturned. So that's a big problem. And the reason this is a problem is because this guy here thinks that the value is x equals 10. But if I have another guy over here and he reads from these bottom two nodes, he is going to think the value is x equals six. So it's possible for two people who are reading from our cluster to actually disagree on the value. Hence, our quorums are not strongly consistent. If there were a way somehow for us to roll back this right and say, okay, well, it didn't succeed everywhere, so x clearly is not equal to 10, then of course we would be strongly consistent, but that problem and ability to be able to roll back is of course not guaranteed. It would require this guy sending another network request to the top database node, which is not guaranteed to get there. It could fail too. And then one final case that is worth mentioning is something known as sloppy quorums. So the gist of sloppy quorums is that oftentimes people have different database clusters, right? So for example, if you have one in America for your North American users, and then you have one in APAC for Asian and Australian users, basically the gist here is that, you know, sometimes one cluster in a geographical region can just go down for a variety of reasons. So you can see that's happened with cluster one. And now as a result, what a smart system might do that's actually resilient is they start routing a writes from an American user to the APAC cluster. And so these are still actually going to be quorum writes because as you can see, n is equal to three and w is going to be equal to two. So we're still writing to two nodes and those are going through successfully. But let's say all of a sudden that cluster one actually comes back up. You know, someone plugs the data center back in, everything's good to go. And now this guy reads from cluster one because that's where his writes are actually being sent. So these are reads right here he is not going to see the writes that he made before because they're in cluster two. And so that is kind of the concept of a sloppy quorum. And the gist here is that for this situation to kind of fix itself, what we need to do is actually take the data from cluster two and transfer it back over to cluster one. That is known as a hinted handoff. And so if we perform that, now we're in good shape again, but again, it's not strongly consistent simply due to the fact that I can just read that left quorum after I make quorum writes and now we're still not good to go. Okay, so basically in conclusion, quorums are really useful, right? 
The majority of the time, they are actually going to result in behavior that kind of resembles strong consistency. However, strong consistency is not truly strong consistency unless there are no edge cases, unless you know with 100% certainty and like mathematical guarantees pretty much that if you're reading data at the same time as someone else, you're both going to agree on the value that you're getting. So basically, leaderless setups can be really, really good for kind of these let's say relatively chill client-side applications, something like a social media app where it's not the end of the world if some data gets lost. However, if we're really talking about protected data that it's super sensitive and you know if it goes missing, we're in a lot of trouble, then maybe quorums aren't the best thing for you. If everyone needs to be able to agree on what the current value of the data is, then leaderless replication setups probably are not the move. In fact, single leader nor multi-leader setups are the move either. For us to really discuss what the right thing is there, we're going to have to wait a few more videos, but it's going to take distributed consensus. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am now going to wait out the cold in my room alone and have a good night.